Webb Space Telescope detects terrifying life form in an alien's planet for the first time. For the first time, NASA's James Webb Space Telescope has detected carbon dioxide on an alien world four years after Hubble and Spitzer confirmed large amounts of water vapor in WASP 39B's atmosphere. Is this a good sign? Well, let's find out. Hey guys, welcome back to Beyond Unknown. Today, we'll be taking a look at the JWST's new discovery in an alien planet. Make sure to stick till the end of this video, as we have a lot to cover. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and like today's video. It helps us a long way. And let's dive in. How to look for life on other planets. Looking for gases produced by living organisms in the atmospheres of distant planets is one way to look for life outside our solar system. A group of scientists believes we should look for two specific gases, carbon dioxide and methane. Most astronomers believe that looking for oxygen as a sign of extraterrestrial life is a good idea, because many plants and other organisms constantly emit the gas, oxygen is abundant in the Earth's atmosphere. Without life on Earth, oxygen would eventually become extinct. However, according to a new study published in Science Advances, oxygen may not be the best target because the gas did not always exist in large quantities on Earth, even when life was present. Billions of years ago, the Earth's atmosphere contained various combinations of gases, including carbon dioxide and methane, that could only exist together due to primitive life on Earth's surface. According to the study, carbon dioxide and methane react with one another, causing methane to eventually disappear, unless some types of organisms continue to pump more methane into the atmosphere. Finding those two gases together on another planet isn't always a deal breaker. Methane can be produced by a wide range of processes other than living organisms. However, scientists claim that they calculated the chances of an atmosphere containing the two gases that, with no life on the surface and that chances are slim. You can make a little bit of methane without life. However, without life, it's difficult to explain why there's so much methane in the atmosphere. Astronomers have long debated the best methods for searching for life on other planets. Some have proposed studying the light reflected off a planet's surface to see if there are any features on its surface that resemble vegetation. Others have argued that we should look at how gases change in the atmosphere of a planet. When plants in the northern hemisphere die off in the fall and then grow again in the spring, the Earth's carbon dioxide levels fluctuate throughout the year. A similar seasonal cycle may be occurring elsewhere. The main goal has always been to find oxygen but even oxygen has issues. Some models show that a lot of oxygen can end up in an atmosphere where there is no life. And that's why astronomers have recently suggested looking for both oxygen and other gases that don't belong together. These are gases that would chemically react with oxygen and cause the gas to disappear. As a result, they're a strong indicator that something, say plants, is keeping the oxygen around. Our planet is an excellent example of how this works. Oxygen should not be able to coexist with all the methane in our atmosphere, nor should it be able to coexist with nitrogen in our vast liquid oceans. However, trees, plants, and even plankton in the ocean continue to replenish the oxygen in our atmosphere, without which we would not exist. An astronomer and his colleagues wanted to know if oxygen had always been the best indicator of life on Earth. If you're an alien looking for life on Earth, it'd be really obvious now, he says, referring to the abundance of oxygen. However, would you be able to detect life earlier in Earth's history? And the answer is, perhaps not. There was almost no oxygen in the air for the first half of the planet's history, and the levels of the gas were extremely low for the majority of the second half. The researchers compiled all of their best guesses about what has been in Earth's atmosphere since the planet's formation 4.5 billion years ago. They discovered that our planet still had four incompatible gases in the first half of its life, carbon dioxide, methane, 
nitrogen, and water. As a result, they propose searching for carbon dioxide and methane on other planets, as these two gases are easier to detect than the others. However, if you find all four, that's fantastic, the researcher stated. According to an MIT planetary scientist who was not involved in this study, the approach could work. It's wonderful to see the, the debate should continue with new ideas, she says. But it's always possible that scientists will come up with other scenarios to explain a pairing of carbon dioxide and methane in the future. This is normal and healthy in science, she says, but in some cases do not get resolved for a long time, or maybe ever. Even if astronomers discover these gases on another world, the planet would still need to be small and rocky like Earth, as well as be close enough to its star for liquid water to exist. And finally, recently a group of more than 30 scientists studying the spectrum of the gas giant exoplanet WASP-39b discovered a strong indication of carbon dioxide abundance in the planet's atmosphere. Previous Hubble and Spitzer space telescope studies had found water vapor, potassium, and sodium in the exoplanet's atmosphere, but this is the first time carbon dioxide, a greenhouse gas and, at least on Earth, a byproduct of animal metabolism, has been positively identified on a distant world. The new findings have been accepted for publication in the journal Nature and are now available on the online academic server ArcSiv. So what makes this discovery so significant? The discovery is one of the first to come from Webb's initial observations, and it suggests that the new space telescope may also aid in revealing the atmospheric components of smaller, rocky, Earth-like exoplanets during its operational life. Precise detection of gas concentrations in the atmospheres of such planets could aid scientists in detecting signs of alien life, if it exists. WASP-39b spectrum was one of the first five web images made public on July 12th, though it is not a photograph in the traditional sense. Webb's infrared spectrometer measures starlight passing through the atmospheres of distant planets, such as WASP-39b. But, since various elements and molecules absorb light at different wavelengths, the sequence of dips and spikes exposes what chemicals are present in the intervening atmosphere. According to one of the scientists, as soon as the data appeared on my screen, the whopping carbon dioxide feature grabbed me. It was a special moment, crossing an important threshold in exoplanet sciences. WASP-39b is a gas giant planet 700 light years from Earth that orbits a sun-like star. It has roughly the same mass as Saturn, but is 1.3 times larger than Jupiter, owing to the extreme temperature of WASP-39b, which measures around 1,600 degrees Fahrenheit, and orbits its star at a distance closer to our Sun than Mercury does. Accurate carbon dioxide measurements can help scientists better understand the formation of exoplanets like WASP-39b, such as how much solid versus gaseous material was involved. However, the measurement also hints at Webb's ability to decipher the atmospheres of smaller, more Earth-like rocky planets. Planets where life as we know it could thrive, leaving telltale signs of its presence in the atmosphere of an exoplanet. And that ends our episode. We hope that you enjoyed the video. Please subscribe and leave a comment down below your own thoughts, and don't forget to like today's video. And we'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.